Hey y'all, I am still drinking a gallon of water a day. And if you want to get an update on how my body is doing regarding drinking a gallon of water a day, there was only one day that I did not have a gallon of water. But if you do want to hear the changes in my body since drinking a gallon of water a day, and if you would like an update on the sand fleas that I had, please stay tuned. I have some notes written down in my journal. Excuse <laughs> that right there. I don't know, chicken grease or something, who knows. To update you on my drinking a gallon of water a day, there are some days that I actually drink more than a gallon of water a day. Today is February 19th and I have literally been drinking a gallon of water every day except for one day. I have lost a whopping six pounds. Six pounds. I am so happy that I actually finally lost weight. I've also been eating a lot of salads and something else that I really enjoy eating, I like eating egg whites. I've been frying egg whites with onions and peppers and also chicken sausage and turkey bacon and it tastes so good. I love it. Also, I started eating the Goli gummies, which are like the apple cider vinegar gummies. I just recently started that but I've incorporated that into my diet as well. But I really think it's the drinking the gallon of water each day that has really helped me to lose the six pounds. I wanna talk about the sand fleas that I got. So if you remember in January, I had swollen ankles, I had all these bumps and scabs and bullet holes on my legs and I didn't know what the heck it was. With my insurance we have what's called first stop help and all you have to do is use your cell phone take a picture or you know call this number tell them what your symptoms are and then you can talk with a doctor and they can give you a prescription that's what I thought was gonna happen but instead when he saw the picture of my ankles he thought that I could have been having a stroke so he said that I needed to go to the emergency room which I did I went to the emergency room and that's when they diagnosed me as having the sand fleas. They gave me an MRI and they also gave me a CT scan and no blood clot was found. So they thought I had sand fleas. The prescription that they gave me did not make the marks go away. The swelling was still there. The pain was still there. So then I had to see my primary care doctor she was not available so i had to see someone else in her group and he had me doing some blood work and he had me taking x-rays because i guess he thought that my foot was broken or something i don't know but again he didn't know what was wrong with me either he gave me a prescription that didn't help either finally my gastroenterologist said i needed to see my dermatologist so i went to see my dermatologist and she did some biopsies on my legs. And from those biopsies, I had to get stitches. So I was not able to work out the way that I would normally work out Wednesday. You know, today is Friday. Wednesday is when I found out that I have leukocytoplasmic vasculitis. And I'm gonna put that right here. Hopefully I am um, pronouncing it correctly. So if I don't pronounce it correctly, it'll be here on the screen. For short, they just call it vasculitis. What vasculitis is, is inflammation of small blood vessels. So in order to get rid of the vasculitis, she put me on prednisone, which is a steroid. And as we all know, steroids make you put on weight. I was on steroids years ago prior to getting the Remicade injections and I went up to 244 pounds. So when she told me that I have to take steroids, I 
lost it because that is something that I don't want to do, especially I just lost six pounds and now you're telling me I have to take steroids. So I have been taking steroids since Wednesday. I don't think I've put on any weight. You know, sometimes people get like a bigger face. I know my face blew up when I was on steroids before. So hopefully that doesn't happen. When I went to the ER in January, remember I told you that they thought that I was having a blood clot. Well, I didn't have a blood clot, but they did find a tumor on my pancreas. <laughs> So I guess I am happy that I did go to the ER, but I was very, very shocked and surprised to find out that I had a tumor, let alone a tumor on my pancreas. From there, I had to have yet another MRI and the size of the tumor, I believe it's six centimeters, I believe that's the size. And then from there, I needed to have an endoscopic ultrasound and with the endoscopic ultrasound they were going to do a biopsy so yet I had to have another biopsy and we're only today's only February 19th and I've had two biopsies already that was the day that I did not drink a gallon of water because in order to have the ultrasound I could not have any food or drink after midnight and I did not have the ultrasound until 1.30 the next day. I had the biopsy for the tumor that is on my pancreas and also on Wednesday, Wednesday, like I literally just found out Wednesday the results of the tumor. So <laughs> although the tumor is not cancerous and maybe I should say the tumor is not believed to be cancerous and I'm doing air quotes because they're not sure still they're not sure they've done a lot of tests and a lot of my levels are elevated including my carcinol embryonic antigens I'm gonna put that word here on the screen too just in case if I'm not saying that word correctly that is pretty high at a high level for me. There were some other things that was concerning. Obviously, I'm not healing properly. The size of the tumor, my gastroenterologist surgeon. So I have a gastroenterologist and I have a gastroenterologist that is also a surgeon. He said that I needed to have what is called a distal pancreatectomy splenectomy that is a mouthful and there is the air freshener going off again the, the tumor is in the center of my pancreas so they're going to remove from that piece of my pancreas to the tail of the pancreas they're going to remove that and they are also going to remove my entire spleen so i will have only part of my pancreas left I will be in the hospital for at least five days. And after I get out of the hospital, I won't be able to go to work for four to six weeks. It just all depends on how I heal. I've never been in the hospital longer than two days. I was only in the hospital when I gave birth to my three children. They were all vaginal births. So I wasn't in the hospital for long and I recuperated very fast because I did not have to have a C-section. Once they remove part of my pancreas, they're gonna do some further testing. And that is when they will be able to determine if I will need some therapy. And I'm like, what kind of therapy? Like, like what were we talking about therapy? I need some therapy. Like, what you mean? You know, I'm thinking there's nothing wrong with my mind. Like what kind of therapy? Like mental health therapy, you know? No, he was talking about chemotherapy. So I'm like, okay, you know, um, it's not cancer, but we're talking chemotherapy. So I'm not trying to speak that into existence. You know, I'm going to be proactive. Surgery is scheduled for March the 29th. However, now I remember I told you I found all of this out on Wednesday, the same day that I found out about about the vasculitis. <laughs> My gastroenterologist surgeon 
does not want me to have the prednisone for at least two weeks prior to the surgery. So when the surgery date was set, we did not know the time at that time when the date of the surgery was scheduled that I would be taking prednisone until March 26th. So there is a good chance that the surgery is going to be moved probably around April 12th. I'm going to go ahead and put that information here on the screen because I'm recording this on Friday. I should find out next week the actual date and if it is going to change from March 29th. If it does change to April 12th, that's going to be a good thing because my oldest daughter, Ree, had planned on coming to Ohio anyways. But with Miss Rona, we all know she's not going to be allowed to come to the hospital anyway. Only one person can come each day. It's just a mess. And if she brings honey, oh my goodness. Oh, I miss my granddaughter. That would be so nice. That would be such a, a great surprise. And I'm going to be in the hospital for my 51st birthday if the surgery is pushed back to April 12th. My birthday is April 15th. So there's a good chance I'll be in the hospital and that's fine. I'm not going to be able to kick it anyway because... Having that surgery, it's going to change my eating habits, which I'm glad that I've already started to change my eating habits now, because once I have that surgery, my eating habits really are going to change. I've talked about the tumor. I've talked about the vasculitis. Now I need to talk about the ulcerative colitis. Right now, I can't have the injections for the ulcerative colitis because that may prevent me from healing. So. We're just going to use the prednisone to treat the ulcerative colitis and the team is going to have to talk about what is the treatment going to be after I have the surgery. We're also going to hold off on the partial hysterectomy. That was something that I was supposed to have right around this time. <laughs> but um, again, I've got all these other things that's going on. So we're going to hold off on that partial hysterectomy until we get all of this tumor stuff taken care of. And of course the vasculitis taken care of because your girl's ankles are still swollen. They're healing though, but they're still looking a mess. I'm going to go ahead and get the sleep apnea equipment. I think that is going to help me sleep better so that I can lose some weight. I would love to lose 10 pounds before the surgery. I think that will only make things much better because I want to be healthier. I've lost six pounds. If I could lose 10 pounds, that'd be 16 pounds. That'd be so great. So I think having that sleep apnea machine will help me sleep better so that I could lose some weight possibly. I don't know. We will see. But that's going to be the next step. Some of the things that I have decided to do to better prepare myself for the upcoming surgery. My doctor did not say that I needed to do these things. These are things that I am choosing to do. I am not gonna drink any more alcohol and I'm not happy about that, but I'm gonna tell you why. I just purchased not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, five bottles of the Crown Royal Peach Liquor. Five bottles. I gave them out as gifts except for one bottle. One bottle I kept for myself. I still have a half a bottle of the Crown Royal Salted Caramel. Both of them taste so good and they're so refreshing and I mix the peach with tea, and I mix the salted caramel with ginger ale, and they both taste so good. But your girl is not gonna be drinking because I've read that you know alcohol can kind of hampering effects on your liver and your kidneys and all kinds of stuff. So just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna hold off on the alcohol just for now. I'm not going to have any red meat. So when I'm saying red meat, I'm talking about ground beef, like hamburger, steak. I don't believe ground turkey 
is red meat. Alexa, is ground turkey red meat? No, that's not true. Alexa, give me an example of red meat. Here's something I found on the web. According to Cambridge.org, red meat is commonly considered to include beef, pork, lamb, and game. Well, I don't eat pork anyway, so that's fine. I do like chicken sausage. Alexa, is chicken sausage red meat? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, it depends on what type of meat is used to make the sausage. Sausage made using red meat would be beef, veal, pork, lamb, mutton, goat, or horse. Sausage made from white meats come from fish and poultry. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thanks for your feedback. Um, so yeah, so it sounds like chicken sausage, I can eat that and I can eat the turkey bacon and I can eat chicken and I love seafood. I love crab legs, I love salmon, I love shrimp, I love scallops. I love seafood, so we'll be good to go and no red meat. Can't work out right now because of the stitches in my leg, but I get the stitches taken out next week. So your girl is gonna go back to working out and I'm gonna work out slowly. I'm not gonna go run a marathon next week right after I get my stitches out, but I am going to work out and that's gonna be priority one. Again, I really wanna lose 10 pounds before the surgery. I'm gonna continue, of course, to drink the water. I'm gonna to continue to take the goalie gummies. I also ordered the ashwagandha gummies as well. They're not here yet, but there's a lot of good research that says that the ashwagandha gummies will help with stress, which of course will lower the cortisol levels. And of course you lower those cortisol levels and you can lose some weight. So I'm gonna do that as well. I'm really excited. Despite having to take the prednisone and the prednisone might make me gain some weight, I'm gonna put some things into place so that I don't gain any weight. I actually lose some weight and get healthier for that surgery. I'm gonna to continue to eat my salads. I'm gonna to continue to eat the egg whites. I, I'm really loving the egg whites. I think they taste so delicious. I'm gonna to continue to have smaller portions. Eating smaller portions, of course, will also help me lose some weight. Reading, meditating, lighting candles, using the journal, Doing all of these things will also help me with losing weight. And I'm so happy that I've lost six pounds. Like I, I did it, like I did it. I finally got over that hump and I lost some weight. Now I just gotta keep on losing that weight despite having a medication that says I'm going to gain weight. I'm still going to lose the weight. It, it is a must. And that's why it's so important for me to record this and share this with you because of course I am gonna share my progress with you all and keep you updated on how my vasculitis is doing, how my ulcerative colitis is doing. I am looking forward to recording a video when I do get my sleep apnea machine. A good part about the surgery is I will lose weight after the surgery. My eating habits are going to change instead of eating one large meal a day. Pretty much that's what I've been doing. I've been eating one meal or two meals a day. It just all depends on how hungry I am doing the intermittent fasting. That is going to change after I have the surgery. I'm going to have to eat four or five small meals a day because they're saying that my stomach won't be able to hold as much food or maybe I'll get nauseated or whatever. So they're saying that I'm gonna automatically lose weight because of that. It seems like everyone loses weight after they have the surgery. So that's gonna be a plus too. So I just wanted to share that information with you all. And I really wanna have a good conversation down below. I know I'm not the only one that has had to take steroids. So let's have a conversation. Share down below if you've ever been on steroids, if you had to do the taper, did it change your body? Did you get that big moon face? 
do you know anyone that's had these surgeries? Have you ever even heard of that surgery? Have you ever heard of vasculitis? What do you think about my six pound weight loss? I, I hope you think that's good. Have you increased your water intake? I've read that eating pineapples is also something good too. So that's probably something that I'm going to try to increase in my diet. Let's have a conversation down below. Let's talk about this and the sleep apnea. Do you guys have some sleep apnea machines? I, I know my girl Nezzy has a sleep apnea machine and she had shared that it really didn't help her to lose any weight. But maybe some of you can share about your experiences with the sleep apnea machine. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Bye.